I got a sear red in my PowerShell terminal. Uh, that means the, some of the instructions I'm following don't give me quite enough information to get through this without issues. So let's walk through building a Fling ISO and let's talk through some of the challenges you may run into that aren't well documented. All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover making a Fling ISO for VMware ESXi. So what is a Fling ISO? Uh, a Fling ISO is an ESXi image that comes with extra software drivers uh, that expand the ESXi capability. Um, so two big examples are USB network interface and the community network interface drivers. Those are some of the most popular ones. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. I'm gonna walk us through a really good blog post but what I'm really going to do is highlight all the things I personally found it was missing. Uh, and instead of just telling you how to find that information of a specific version of ESXi, I'm going to show you how to create the correct commands based on any version of ESXi. The link in the description is going to have the instructions and the templated commands. So you'll be able to recreate this as well. I'll also have the link to the VertNet blog page because they did a great job of demystifying most of this. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to get a clear understanding of how to do this with the ESXi documentation. So their blog answered most of my questions. And this video covers the delta between their blog post and what I had to do to get this working. So this is the VertNet blog page. And it has step-by-step -step instructions for creating a Fling-based ISO. It's specifically based on the USB to NIC uh, driver, and it also includes specific versions of ESXi. So when you look at every command in this document, it's based on a specific version. So one of the things that we're gonna talk through in this video is how do you build the set of commands for a different version of the driver? How do you build the commands for a different version of ESXi? And what prerequisite environmental activities do you need to take care of? They also reference the Rofus USB builder. I also recommend the same thumb drive builder. Um, if I've run into some issues where the master boot record is not created correctly for the ISO images created by ESXi. Um, some software isn't smart enough to create their own master boot record. Um, there are different versions of ISO image writers that literally write a byte for byte copy of the image that's created. And that's great if the ISO itself creates the master boot record, but not great if the ISO itself does not create a boot record, then the software needs to be smart enough to create a boot record. And there aren't as many uh, software ISO writers uh, that are smart enough to do, that, to do that. So I recommend Rufus as well. There's two ways to make this ISO. I'm covering the command line PowerShell way. Uh, the other way is to have a running version of ESXi and there's something supposed to be called ISO builder in there. In the PowerShell way, as you see right now, I have a sea of red. Uh, this sea of red um, is being caused by two reasons. One of them is I don't have script functionality enabled. When I list execution policies for this machine, you'll see by default, I have four different execution policies. And the last one is restricted. Uh, so that's the local policy. If you try to change the local policy from a PowerShell user that's not an administrator, then you're also gonna get errors. So that's what we have with our sea of red. So we're going to go in as administrator and fix the policy so that it says unrestricted. Now in the video right now, you'll see me change it to undefined, um, but know that it needs to turn into unrestricted in order for it to work. So this command is one of the first useful commands I, I went to go find that wasn't in the blog post. So this is called get profile. It shows you every profile that's available to download. One of the previous steps, you actually load in an XML file that's a remote file after you run the image software. And so this allows you to interact with the VMware uh, website and pull down various versions of the software. When you run this command, this will show you every version uh, that's available and that you can completely pull down. And this is also a starting point from what you'll be able to pull apart and use as part of your Fling ISO environment. One thing to be aware of is you pull down your Fling software separately and your Fling software needs to be compatible with the image version that you want to use. So for example, as of today, 7.0.3 has come out. 
and most of the Fling software is not yet compatible with 7.0.3. Um, there's multiple versions of 7.0.2, uh, and that goes, I think, A through D. 7.0.3 is not supported yet by a lot of these drivers, so you need to pay attention to those versions. When you list it here, you'll see uh, the newest version. You'll want to stick with a version that's compatible with the software and you'll have to just go on the fling page on the VMware website and kind of look through the notes to see what people are saying. Right now you'll notice people will say, hey, when's this going to be ready for the latest version of ESXi? All right, so as you see in this notepad, I'm going to start building the commands. So as you see in this first section, you see it's asking for image profile. Well, now we know where that comes from. We can actually pick a profile name. We can fill it in that slot. We realize that the last section can technically be named what we want as long as it ends in zip, but we're gonna use a name relative to the profile so that we can easily understand what it is. Uh, once we have that zip information, we can follow the original commands and the steps by removing the remote profile and adding the local profile for the image profile that we just pulled down. Um, the next couple steps, you see me pull down a bunch of the commands, drop them into the notepad so that I can start changing them one by one. So we end up creating a new image environment name. Uh, we create a new vendor. So we just threw in Curious Tech as our vendor. Uh, we created a new profile. So we took an existing profile and just named it something somewhat similar so we'd understand it's our custom profile. And then when we get into the next part, it's the software package. So the name of the software package is dependent on the fling zip that you downloaded separately and out of band. best way to see what your software package is for your specific fling is to unzip the fling, head into the metadata folder, head into the vibs folder, and there you should have an XML document. And you'll want to take the name that leads up to the two hyphens. So you'll want to take the name that leads right up to hyphen hyphen. The name that you use could be rel related to net community. So that's specifically the name for the community network drivers, but the name is different for the USB name fling and the name is different for other flings you know this is another step that the block doesn't really walk through you just kind of like hey what's the name of the software package once you have your new image profile with your new software package blend into it then you just need to export it and then remember your image profile is a clone of your upstream image profile so let's say esxi 7.0 directly from vmware if you take that image profile and you add a software package to it like community network drivers now you have the upstream image profile along with the new software package. This is one of the reasons why we needed to have both environments available to us because when we reference the software package, we need that environment available to us. But when we clone the first profile, we needed that environment available. So the CLI is able to pull resources from both sides. From here, you're gonna create the ISO and a zip version of that. And then you have both now available on your system for reuse. The 
last thing you want to remember to do is do not leave your system available to have unrestricted software libraries in PowerShell run. So set that back to restricted for the local machine as it was before. Also, you can review your other policies since you're listing them and decide that if you want to take on a bit more of a restricted role for those as well. All right, thanks for joining for this video. I tried to cover the pieces I had to go research and find. Uh, BertNet blog has most of the information, doesn't really get into what you need to do in your PowerShell environment to get it in a run, and also where you find the values for the commands that they give examples for. So I went through, kind of figured out the bits of pieces and the extra information that you need to get that running. So you should be able to run end to end for any fling and any ESXi version that you want to make this for. I've linked to the documentation for VertNet. I've linked to the documentation that I created. I have links to the ESXi documentation, some links to Fling. I also have links to the PowerShell commands, right? That's where I found the, how to list the profiles. You may have other things you want to learn how to do. That stuff is also in that section of the documentation for the PowerShell library that you import. If this was useful to you and you want to see more about HomeLab, you want to see more VMware stuff, you want to see uh, some cryptocurrency stuff, some software development stuff, maybe some things you're not used to, maybe some machine learning content, check out more of the channel. Until then, Curious Tech out.